wheat and sugar and, and uh, gluten. And uh, lost a couple of pounds, a couple of inches, but that was just kind of the bonus because I really wanted to be all prepared to receive everything that God had for me. And, and uh, this week, uh, last Tuesday, was, was seven months for Gary. And uh, I don't know what it is, around that time every month I get quite emotional, but the Lord really speaks to me and everything is just really, really precious. So I was going to share a little bit about that. And uh, ever since uh, he's died, the word grace and the number five, which Larry informed me is the number for grace, has been very, very prominent in my life. And uh, on day five, the Lord had told me to take five deep breaths for his transition, which I thought, I don't even know what this means, but I did it anyway. And uh, talking to Jennifer later, transition is actually a transformation or a, a, a transforming, and that's when I also saw that, that beautiful yellow butterfly, which so I've always loved butterflies anyway, but now the number five, the word grace and butterflies are extremely prominent in my life. I just really notice them and use them all the time. And uh, so a few days ago, God was speaking to me on the way to town, and I hope I can say this out crying. I can't. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But the Lord spoke a word to me. He said, the grace was for you. And it breaks me every time. It just breaks me every time. What an awesome God I see. Amen, serve. amen. And, uh, and so I was having a very mo. I was just really got to sobbing that day because God is so good. Amen. I just love him so much. Amen. And he's such a amen. good provider. And it was so cute. I'm sitting there sobbing and dead. My little dog came up and started going, <laughs> I'm okay. And then the others came up like, Mommy, what's the matter? Mommy, what's the matter? It's like, these aren't sad tears. These are happy tears. Because I was so broken up about how God takes such good care of us. How He knows these things ahead of time. How He prepares us for these things. And uh, it was such a revelation to me that day. It's just like, I mean, I'm crying all the way to town like in one town, you know, trying trying to wipe my eyes because thought it seemed like a couple of times now. Just every song was just, I praise you, I worship you, I love you so much. And uh, and some of the songs that came on after that, because I had it on the, on the praise, praise thing, the first one was, Carry Me to the Cross, I'm Not Alone. You carry me every day. You carry me all the way. I mean, it's such an awesome God that's going to carry us through anything that we go through. Amen. The next one was your way. I'm trying to believe you're holding me. I just want to be what you want me to be. Take me where I'm not lonely. I want to live my life your way. And that is my heart's desire, is to do everything he's called me for. And that's the one thing that the, the, the little youth leader preached on in Jaylene's church that day. She says, uh, we have an assignment, and we need to know what that assignment is. And I thought, for 41 years, my assignment was Gary. Yep. And I thought, Lord, what's my sign right now? And I know, I know that I know that I know it's going to be reaching brokenhearted people. And uh, through everything I've learned, I've learned he was very brokenhearted. And I know God's going to use me to minister to brokenhearted people. And I'm hearing it through John Hagee, and I hear it through Robert Morris, and I hear it through Joyce Myers, and I hear it through a, a, a church I wasn't even supposed to, you know, normally not at. Through there, it's like, Lord, I know this is my assignment. And I want to do it your way. And I want to go your way. Then Jeremy Camp came on. There will be a day when we'll see Jesus face to face. The journey seems long. You feel you're walking on your own. There's never been a day when you walked alone. We've never walked alone. I never walked alone. I will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. And he promises all these things to us. No fear, no pain. But until that day, we hold on to you always. You wipe away my sorrow, and we'll see Jesus face to face when he wipe away the tears. I just cannot believe how broken I've been the last two weeks. Oh, what an awesome God he is, and how much he loves us. I'm just overwhelmed with how much he loves us. And it's been my desire, and it's been a lot of preaching too, I'm going deeper. I thought, Lord, I want to go deeper. I want to go higher. And the more we see who he is, we're willing to do that. We're able to do that because we only do it through him. We can't do it any other way. And then it came, oh, God is still God. Keep the candle burning. Love holds us together. And uh, won't you hold me together? 
And it's like and an amazing love. And it's like for 40 minutes, every song that came on just ministered to me. And I'm trying to write down the words. I can't read half my writing, but I recorded them so I can go back and get the words. But uh, it's how I love your word, my Lord and King. I surrender all. I was made to pray because I'm a believer. And uh, you're already there. And it's just like, it's just like, what, am I going to quit recording all day? Am I just going to record these songs all day? Because every song just so ministered to me. And that's what the Lord did in those first days and weeks. And uh, he ministered to me so much through the songs that were on there. And you might say, well, they're just, they, they were recorded. Like I told Jaylene, it's the timing. Yeah. Just like when they stepped into the water and the waters parted, it was the timing. Just like when the walls came down at Jericho. Yeah, maybe it was an earthquake. It was the timing. It's the timing. And when everything gets there and God brings those things and, and you get those, those uh, songs and on the way to town I'm praying songs and I, I'm pretty quick. I'm just bawling and, and just praising God because he is so good. He is so good. And uh, he'll, he's brought me through everything. He will bring me through everything. He will bring you through everything. And so I just, I just can't praise him enough for what an awesome, awesome God that we serve. And, and then I, I, I get a, a lesson on, on receiving God's power, grace and then on releasing God's grace. It's like, I mean, every time I turn, yeah, they just taped a week ago, or two weeks ago, but this is the moment I need this. Yeah. Just like I've always said of David Wilkinson's things, I picked up things sometimes three or four years, sometimes 17 years old, I find one, and when I read it, that's the day I need it. And, and uh, uh, Robert Morris told an illustration today, he said there was a time, because he's, he's talking about the Lord's Prayer, God, uh, when it says, give me my daily bread, it's actually my daily provision. And it's spiritual and physical. And he said one day, he said they, he used to be a traveling minister, and the Lord always provided. But one time, the Lord told him, he says, for this summer, for three months, I want you to work for me. I want you to get up from 8 to 5, and you're going to do nothing but, but spend time with me, except for your lunch with your wife. The rest of the time, you'll spend time with me. And uh, he said, and... Uh, I made all the savings, but he's like, I knew a bill's coming in. I'm on the way, way to the mailbox, and I'm complaining. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm praying. <laughs> That's our word, you know. And it's like, Lord, you said, uh, and he's, the Lord says, have you even asked me? And he's like, I'm sorry, Lord. I do need provision. I need, I need this bill to be paid. And he says, I get to the mail, and there was a check from some people, and he said it was enough to pay my double tithes, which I'd been paying for this bill, a little bit left over. And he said, I get in the car to go home. The Lord's going, well... He's like, what? He goes, aren't you going to thank me? Uh-huh. Come on. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. He goes, no, you don't understand what a miracle this is. He says, you don't understand how I had to start work several months ago on this couple, and how they got a bonus, and that's what they're paying you out of is this bonus, and how I had to get it here through the U.S. mail and get it here at just this moment. He goes, you don't realize what a miracle that was. And that's what sometimes I don't think we realize when something happens, like, oh, boy, that was good. How long ago did God set those things into motion? How many people did God have to move in? How many pieces of the puzzle had to be in place for us to get to that exact moment to receive what we were supposed to receive? How, how long ago did he lay on David Wilkinson's heart to put that message in, for me to get it, to put it somewhere and not find it for 10 years to get it on the day that I needed it? Uh -huh. I mean, you talk about God coordinating stuff. How can anybody think he's not alive? How can anybody think he's not in our life every single moment how many how many times do, do we have to think we did not get these things accidentally they didn't just happen all of a sudden and so that shows me that every day of my life god has been in charge of what was going on he knew what was coming and he was preparing me for that day he knew what i was going to need on that day and that word grace i love joyce meyer's definition his enabling power to do with ease what you could never do in your own strength and that's what God gives me every day. And, and I thought, it's no wonder everybody's amazed at how well I'm doing. People say, I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed. I said, well, it's all God. And it's really, really coming home. It is all God. Amen. It is all God. It is not yeah. me. It is not anything I could do on my own. It is all God. It is all the Holy Spirit. And uh, he loves me so much. This was part of his plan. I mean, if he gave me assignment, he knew assignment had to come to an end, and he knew there had to be a good conclusion. And, and so I just, I'm just in awe of the things he keeps teaching me and showing me. And this was the last page of my notebook uh, since Gary died. I started writing this notebook. And uh, part, part of it is uh, uh, Joyce Myers or Robert Morris. 
But I would probably say three quarters of it is what God has spoke to me. Things God has spoken to me. And Jennifer says, I see a book out of this. I said, well, you never know. You just never know. And, and that's why I can't go back and get born past a couple of pages without just breaking down. Because he is so wonderful. And if he loves me that much... How much more does he love everybody in the Lord? He died for everybody. Right. And that, that little girl gave a testimony that so ministered to me because she said she was in Guatemala or Guatemala or Ecuador somewhere. And she's only like 13 years old. And uh, she had uh, always, she, they, they were supposed to give their testimony. Well, no, she, I'm sorry, she was like 20 by this time. She's like, they're supposed to give these people a testimony. She's like, I don't have a testimony. I was raised in a Christian family, and I've had a wonderful life, and I excelled in school. And I thought, you're talking my life. You're talking my life. And, and, but she says, but I remembered when I was 13 years old, she, got, uh, she collapsed, and they took her to the doctor and found out that she, and <clears throat> found out she had a brain tumor. And she said, I'd always been super smart in school. And uh, it dawned on me, and the Lord showed her, anything, it's only me. Anything I give you, I can take away like that. And she's like, if I don't have my brain, I may never speak again. I may never be able to communicate. I may be, not be able to, this girl's 13 years old realizing this. And the Lord showed her, I give and I can take away. And it's all, everything you have is only through me. And so she says, Lord, I just, I just want to have a heart for people. And I want to understand people. And, and she went up to some drug dealer there. And she says, I went up to that guy. And I, she says, all of a sudden, the Lord just allowed me to look into his eyes and see into his soul. She goes, I just started crying because of the life, because how lost he was. And uh, she says, he, she probably thought, what's this girl standing here before me crying her heart out like that? And uh, she said, I knew some Spanish, I understood Spanish, knew some. She said she started speaking in fluent Spanish and explained to this man's salvation. And this man was saved. Wow. And uh, God can use any of us in any yeah. way. But he can also, he gives and he takes away. And that's what that song, which it still tells me, it still breaks me up every time I hear it. Uh, I'll praise you in this storm. Because you're the Lord that gives and takes away. He may give you kids. He may give you wealth. He may give you health. He may give you a spouse. But he can take it away too. And it's his right. Because he gave it to us. It's not ours to keep. None of it's ours to keep. He gives it and he can take it away anytime he wants. But if he takes it away, he's got a reason for it. And he's got a plan. And he's got a better plan than what we could have possibly have known. And that's when he gives us grace, his enabling power to walk through things we couldn't walk through. And I look at people that lost children, and I thought, how do you ever walk through something like that? I cannot even imagine. And yet I see people do it all the time, and I thought, it's only through God's grace. It's only him that can get us through these things. So during this time, I read this, this story in, in the uh, uh, oh. Miraculous Ways, which is the like that guidepost, about the dragonfly, and it's so ministered to me. The insects, the dragonfly, lives underwater, wondering what exists above. One brave bug offers to climb the lily pad and report back. He makes his way up the stalk, breaks the surface, and feels the sun's warmth. Suddenly his body is transformed into a beautiful four-winged creature, a dragonfly. After soaring through the air, he tries to return home, but discovers he cannot dive beneath the water. He's unable to tell anyone about the wonders of the world above. And that's what happens to those that go before us. They're in something wonderful, but they can't tell us about it. And the only way we find out is to go there, and we can't come back either. And, and I thought, yes, it's a wonderful, wonderful world. They get to enter in something that's beyond anything we could possibly imagine, but they can't tell us that. And, and I know God has assured me over and over and over that Gary isn't a part of that wonderful world, that he isn't hurting now. He, you know, he, he's, he's got it so much better. And it's like, God, you had to walk for me, but the only way I could do it is if you take care of him. As long as he's taken care of, you can go and do what you need to do. You know, it's like if you want to go do something, you got your kids. As long as you know they're safe, okay, as long as you're safe, I'll run in here and I'll do this. As long as they're safe and they're being taken care of, I can go do what I need to do. And that's what we, we have to realize when God calls people home. They're safe. They're in a safe place. We can do now what he's called us to do. We don't know why God's called us to live on. We don't know why he, he took him and not me or why, why things happen. But I know God knew this before we were ever created in our mother's wombs. I know he had a plan for us. And I know he knew the day those, those lives would converge. He knows the days those lives went apart in this flesh. There's a day we're going to converge again in the spirit. And 
God had it all planned. He had it all planned. He even knew when he created man, he was going to fall. He knew when he created man, they were going to need a savior. But he knew there was a day that savior was going to come and he was going to die. But he was going to rise and have something so wonderful that we couldn't possibly imagine in store for us. He knew his son would be willing to do this. He knew I can create man, and yeah, he's going to have problems, but I know there's going to be an answer for those problems. And when we think about the provision that he's got for us, oh my goodness, it's, he takes care of everything in every area, spiritual, physical, mental, emotional. And this, this particular woman that wrote this, she, loved her, she knew her daughter loved dragonflies. Her daughter died at 27 years old. She was in an ATV accident, died at 27 years old. But her daughter loved dragonflies. And she'd heard the story about the dragonfly. And uh, it was winter, and she, and she always looked for dragonflies. And when she saw dragonflies, she'd think of her daughter. But now it, it's in some, I don't know, it's back east somewhere where it snows all the time. And she's like, there ain't going to be any dragonflies or anything around. And she just happens to walk into a store and dragonflies are everywhere. I mean, keychains, and there's just, I mean, everywhere. The whole store's just, she's like, what in the world? They said, yeah, who, who had known it? It's a summer shipment that showed up late. She goes, it didn't show up late, it showed right on time. God knew what she needed to see at the moment she needed to see it. And that's why I thought dragonflies are special to her, butterflies are special to me. And what about I've been buying tons of here lately in my scrapbooking stuff to do my cards? Butterflies, butterflies, butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> because they represent that transformation. And, and, just seeing that one that day, which was so unusual, it was so big, it was so beautiful, it was, it was solid yellow. I've never seen anything except that one. In fact, not even for, for a couple minutes, I went to get my camera and it was gone because it lighted on a, on a fire. It was so beautiful and I haven't seen it yet. And to me, so now when I see butterflies, I'm just reminded of God's transforming power of what he could do, not only for Gary, but for everybody else. And uh, so so grace is my word, butterflies is my, my symbol. and. Uh, Number five is my number because Larry told me about the new about the grace, and I thought Gary had a new beginning. I've got a new beginning too. I've got a beginning of a new walk of a new uh, of a new uh, life that Gary, that God has still called me for. I'm not done yet. God's not done with any of us, and that's when I look out here and I think, you know, so many of us are tired. So I ever all we're all grand, except for you, Sean. <laughs> You're not a grandparent. But it's like, God is not done. And I look at Joyce Meyer, she's 70 years old and going strong. And, and I look at other people that, that are uh, older, and it's like, God has a plan. He, God's not limited by age. If he's going to call you to do something, he will enable you to do it. If he wants you to, to be in ministry, and, and when you're 100 years old, he will give you the strength to do that. And so whatever he's called us to do, he's going to enable us to do it. He's going to give us the provision to do it. He's going to take care of it all. We don't have to worry about any of it. And so... Uh, when she talked on, on going deeper and, and getting a new assignment, it's like everything, this, this, you know, this whole four days was just totally for me. And I heard other women saying that too. They'd come out, wow, that was for me. And I can't believe I was one out of 3,000. It was only for me, obviously. And uh, God puts us where we need to be, when we need to be, what we need to hear, what we need to do. And uh, so we receive grace, but we also need to release that grace. We need to teach it to others. We need to show it to others. Because God wants us all to know it, it's for everybody. And, you know, and like they were saying today, uh, I just enjoy uh, John Hagee and to, to Robert Morris. People may, uh, Robert Morris is talking about hell. He goes, people, how are they going to know if you don't tell them? Well, that's how the grace of God is. How are you going to know if they don't tell them? You show them, but you've got to tell them about these things. They, they can't just know these things. You show them, you teach them, you tell them. And uh, we need to be a good steward of his grace. We need to be a good steward of everything that he shows us, of everything he gives us. And uh, then the, uh, the Olympics just got over that Noel Piker Pace, who got the silver medal. She was talking about her whole family being there and supporting her because she had a miscarriage. And so she went back into skating to, to have something that she, she could look forward to. And so her family supported her. This time she got a silver medal in the, the skeleton. I don't know if you're familiar with all that. But she made a statement on this interview, none of us can do anything great alone. And I thought, that's so true. We as individuals cannot do anything great. We need our family. We need our, our support. But we as individuals can't do anything spiritually great either. We need the Holy Spirit. We need God the Father. We need Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Nobody is a man unto himself. Anybody who does anything great is, has got the support of people, has got the support of heaven. And so we see that each of these things moves in, in an awesome way. So the uh, 28th, that was one year I've been retired. And uh, I read In Mysterious Ways, 
which again, this was uh, the same one, but it was October, but I read this on this day. And uh, it's about a woman who went through the tornado uh, in Oklahoma, where it killed a bunch of the kids, but it didn't kill her in her class. And uh, so she says, a teacher's supposed to have all the answers. I could teach my fourth graders about different things, but I can't explain why, explain why some children died in the tornado that hit our, our school last May, and the ones with me survived. All I could tell you is that tragedy doesn't mean God was absent. And I thought, no matter what we go through in life, God was there. In the worst day of my life, God was there. Thank goodness he was there. I couldn't have stood it. And so the worst day of your life, God is not absent. He's there. I don't care what tragedy you go through. I don't care how horrible something may be. God is there. And people say, where was God? It went right where he's always been, right by your side, right there holding you. So they were going back three weeks later to look to look at this, and uh, and uh, the Sunday before the storm, she says she's in her living room getting things ready for school. The tornado warnings were running all over TV, and uh, she says they're a fact of life here in Oklahoma. And our school frequently ran tornado drills, but I'd never been in a twister's path. The thought terrified me. I was trying to teach and respond to disaster, but was I ready? Every weather update increased my anxiety. Lives were in my hands. What if I faltered under pressure when my students needed me most? We have to ask that. What if we falter under pressure when somebody needs us the most? God is putting people in our paths every day that need us. They need to hear what we have to say. They need to have what we have to offer. What if we get out of fear falter? What if we think, I can't handle the pressure. I don't know what to do. God prepares us ahead of time. So she was putting some folders in, and she looked up, and the living room wall seemed to melt away, and in its place was an image of destruction. I could see myself walking in debris, wood, dirt, glass, bricks. I closed my eyes, wishing the vision away. I opened them. It was still there. The disaster had come. I wasn't brave. I was completely paralyzed. I called to my husband, Preston, come here. He came running, and the Im image vanished. She said, something bad's going to happen, and I was powerless to stop it. He said, we should pray about it. That's the answer to everything. We should pray about it. All at once, Psalms 91 came to my mind. In my Bible study, we've been analyzing it. Uh, isn't that interesting? God's been preparing her ahead of time, giving her the word ahead of time. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. And that is out of the Amplified. Uh, I, I found out because when I looked it up and read it, that's not what King James says, feathers. The Amplified said pinions. But she said, pinions, we learned, were the strongest feathers in a bird's wing, able to withstand the most pressure without breaking. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. He covers us with his pinions. <clears throat> They'll never break. They'll never break. They will cover us. They will protect us no matter what we go through, no matter, even a tornado. It doesn't matter. God has got enough there. The Psalms wasn't just about protection. It was about making us strong in the face of danger. And that's what I thought. When we get scripture, it's not just about God's protection. It's about getting us through it successfully. It's about bringing us through strong. It's about bringing us through and still rejoicing and praising his name in the middle of all these things. That's what I needed. So they prayed and she felt courage rising. Monday at school started out quiet, but the tornado warnings persisted. In the afternoon, I gathered my children around me to read C.S. Lewis, the magician's nephew, but didn't get far. All teachers and students, please seek safety immediately. Tornado drill. The sky was dark, lightning was flashing, thunder roared, hail pelted the roof, and the distant signs wailed. This isn't no drill, I thought. I felt panic. The paralysis crept in, but I remembered I had to draw on God's strength. Follow me, students, I said to my class. I led them into the hall. Just as we drilled, the other teachers and I debated whether to take an additional step, cramming into the bathrooms which at least were away from the windows. I spoke up as did some others, let's go. Forty of us crowded in. Some cr crawled under sinks, some huddled in stalls. The approaching tornado was deafening. The ground shook. The power flickered and the light streamed in through the hallway. It faded. The air smelled dank and rotten. The phone rang, Preston, that's her husband. I held it to my ear, Nikki said, I love you. I love you too, I shouted back and the line went dead. The power went out completely. My fear was so great, I couldn't think of what to do. Then those words from Psalms 91 came to me, which the Lord had prepared her ahead of time, which was studying ahead of time. He knew she was going to need these ahead of time. The lines I prayed with Preston, crouched down, I urged the children, backpacks and books over your head. 
Fold your legs under you, keep your backs to the wall. I sank down by the doorway. One girl started crying, and I threw my arms around her. I prayed, calling out to the, screaming to the wind. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you shall find refuge. Others prayed too. The air pressure plummeted, walls crashed, the roof lifted up, pipes broke, shards of metal and concrete flew, the wind sucked the air out of my lungs. I kept praying. Then I felt a hand against my back, someone comforting me. I glanced up. No one was there. I shut my eyes again. The hail stopped, the whip whipping wind ceased. The next time I looked up, there was nothing but sky above us. I peered out the doorway. The hall wasn't there anymore. They were literally standing there, that one room. We stepped carefully over the concrete bricks and blocks. First responders guided us, holding our hands. I looked over the debris, fallen beams, rain-soaked insulation, shattered glass, devastation no one could have been prepared for, yet I'd seen it before. Wow. That Sunday, wow. everything. The awesome destruction laid out before me. It, I had been ready. When the tornado came, I'd done what I thought I couldn't, what I needed to do. And you know, she was only ready because she leaned on the arm of God. She's only ready because of that Bible study ahead of time that put that verse in her that kept her going. I wanted to thank God for that, so I'd come back here weeks after with a sharpie in my hand, went through the rubble. I knew what I wanted to write, what I had to say, the only answer I had found amid all the unanswerable questions. But the words were already written there by someone else. Under his wings, you shall find refuge. I don't know what terrible things happen. I don't know why terrible things happen, but I know how we get through them. We're covered by pinions, the strongest feathers, ready to face whatever comes next. And that's how we get through. Any trial we face is because God prepares us ahead of time. How many times have you had a sermon and you think, I don't really need this, and during the week you're like, thank goodness I had that last week. So the shelter from the storm, the one thing that really got me, tragedy doesn't mean that God was absent. God is always right there. He's there ahead of time. He's there preparing you. He's putting the scripture in ahead of time. He's putting the people in place ahead of time. He's getting the help there ahead of time. You read all the time where somebody gets rescued, they're like, wow, how, how come you Oh, I just happened to take a different route today. That wasn't a coincidence. People just happened to be delayed that weren't, weren't in 9-11. They got delayed. Uh, my alarm didn't go off. My kid forgot their lunch. That wasn't an accident. God had those things prepared ahead of time. That wasn't where he wanted them to be at that time. Or you have people that, that are in a uh, car accident. Somebody comes along and, and has the strength to do something. Like, wow, where did that come from? God gave them that strength at the time that they needed it. God gave them the word at the time that they needed it. We don't have to worry about anything that comes up. We'll know when something happens, like, thank you, Lord. I was, thank you, Lord, I was here at time. No, he prepared your schedule their schedule, everybody's schedule is converged at that point at just the right time. Just like that day, Larry wasn't supposed to be home, but he happened to be home. He just happened to be there when I needed him. Everybody come running just when I needed them. Jerry and Donna and Rick and, and everybody just come running. Over the, it's like, how did everybody find out? Well, they called for prayer and said, forget prayer, we're getting over there right now. And so everybody was there when I needed them. When I called my sister, she dropped early, she said, I'll be there immediately. She came when I needed her. And, and so God has all these things in plan. And Neo Jet says, why do you think it was this day? And I said, I don't know. Uh, but she says, it actually, looking back, she says, it couldn't have been at a better time because school started the next week. At the time it was, they was able to get away. At the time they were there, they were able to be there. I mean, you just look at so many things that, that fell into place. It's like, God, this was a, a, a bad time. It was a good time. It was a good time to be there. That was an odd morning. I remember we were... <laughs> It was what day was it? The 25th? 25th of July. July, okay. I remember that morning we were going to go down to Duke's house in Fort Concrete for it. And because uh, <clears throat> we had been putting it off, and I said, wait, we got to get this done. Well, it was like 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock, you know, still getting light pretty early. So I got up early and I told him, I said, let's get down there just to take a break and we'll start this process because we're going to sweat our tails off. It's going to be hot. Remember, in the summer, mm -hmm. it was hot. You know? Yeah, it was hot. <clears throat> so I was over good. there. And, I mean, uh, I both way way it up a million times, but I just walked over there and he shook his head like that, and I don't know why, but he moved his head just wrong in his neck. His neck did something, I don't know, and he just started, oh, I can't move, I can't move. I'm going, well, you know, later on, he said, well, that's why, because the Lord didn't want you to leave him. I go, well, that's an odd way to stop him. Sometimes he has to do drastic things. Poor man had to endure some intense pain, because he was, he was groaning. But anything else you would have overcome. Well, you know, and, and I told him, I said, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to call him and don't move. Just lay there. Whatever you go take, take an aspirin, I'll pray for you, whatever you got to do. Don't move. We're not going to go do it. I'm just going to tell him, you know, he, he can't even, he can't even move his head. I'm going to pick up 
packet code figures or anything like that. So we didn't do nothing. <clears throat> Otherwise, I would have never been home. I mean, I've been to Duke's house, but mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of odd. Ten more minutes away, and I, I didn't know how to get a hold of them, and I knew your phone number. Of course, it come and up. You know, it come up. It's like, was, who are you? <laughs> the strange thing is, you call me on your cell phone. Because mm -hmm. I was on the other phone with 911. <laughs> Generally, I don't pick up the phone that I don't know. I don't know who it is. Exactly. You know, I don't know who that is, but I don't leave a message. Well, last morning, I don't know why, but I just picked that up. And, and it shocked me when it was your voice because I didn't even, I didn't realize that, you know, you never called on a cell phone. And that was one of the few times we're back when it worked because now we can't get a hold of you all the time. <laughs> I don't know. It's craziness. And, you know, it, because I get the, the guy post in mysterious ways, People will get through on a phone, and later they find out all the phone lines is down, and yet they got through. Or they'll see a light of a, a they're in a storm, they'll see a light of a, a motel, and they get in there, and they're like, well, we don't have any lights, the power's out. Or, you know, things like that. Or, or that lady, uh, the other day, she heard a, a screaming, and, and she kept calling 911. They kept, there's nobody here. But she's like, I know I heard somebody saying, help me. And they, they uh, she started venturing out further. Three miles away, a woman had gone in a ditch, and they said, lady, there is no way you could have heard her screaming. Yet she did. Mm -hmm. And so God knows how to get people there, who to get there. He puts everything at the right. So we never have, God didn't, God didn't make mistakes. And when God has something going on, he's going to have the right people there at the right time. If he's called you to do something, he's going to give you what you need. Be it, that's why I love the word provision. That's been another one that I've really gotten a lot of uh, uh, stuff on because provision can be more than money. It's not just money. It may be food when you need it. It may be people when you need it. It may be uh, wisdom when you need it. it may, whatever it is, provision encompasses so many more things than just money. And so when God gives us provision, and that's why I love what Rob Morris is preaching today. Lord, I give us this day our daily bread. He goes, that is provision. It is not just food. It's provision. It's the word for the day when you need it. It's people when you need it. It's whatever you need when you need it. It's provision. And, and so I know God is going to provide everything we need at right the right at just the right moment and of course we all know he's not early he's not, and he's not late and he's always right on time and uh, and so that that the pinions those strongest feathers in the bird's wing are able to withstand the most pressure without breaking god has us under his unbreakable wing he's going to take care of us and nothing's going to get through nothing is going to come through that and uh it's about making it it's not just about protection but it's making us strong in the face of danger, and I put trials and tests even before they come. He's got us prepared, provi uh, provided for, prepared before they even get there. And sometimes we don't even know we're being prepared for something until it gets there. Like, wow, I'm sure glad I had that lesson last week. Wow, am I glad I read that book last week? And I know Kelly said, I mean, that book when I started teaching on power thoughts, I'd had that like a year, year and a half before I started teaching on it. And, and it just so happened, the Sunday before he died, the scripture was uh, uh, Philippians 4.13. In the Amplified, well, first in the King James, I could do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The Amplified, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient, and I have the word only in Christ's sufficiency. I can do this in Jesus. I can do this. And I thought, looking, you know, looking back, it's like, now isn't that interesting? I had that particular verse in that particular day. And so, of course, all, like I told everybody, keep mulling this scripture over in your voice or over in your head every, uh, all week. And that's what I kept just claiming to God. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? That means I can't, that's that grace. I can't do it myself. He's going to give me what I don't have. He's going to give me what I need. And, and he's going to do it through him. And so... Uh, that woman, uh, he did that for that woman. And uh, I like what she said too, the only answer amid unanswerable questions is him. And then you know, there's so many questions because you think, why did I not see this coming? Why did I not know? Why, 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 uh, why, why didn't I call uh, this? Why did I do that? And I found out later it wouldn't have mattered. It would, with what he had, it wouldn't have mattered. If I'd had a doctor standing right beside me, he couldn't have saved him. It's like, Lord, why didn't you give us a warning? Why, you know, this fall, I mean, he lost some weight. We were doing good. It's like, this fall, we're really going to get, you know, after his mom got, got uh, left, we was really going to get stuff. It's like, but God knew all this. He knew all this. He knew this ahead of time. And he prepared to have people there for me. He prepared to have his Holy Spirit there for me. He prepared to have a, a word from his word.
it to come alive in me it, ahead of time, I can do all things, I can do all things, I can do all things. And I remember the very next morning going out there and thinking, I guess I can do this, but I don't want to do this alone. And, and I thought, but I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Physically, I felt like, and that's why I told Donna one day, it's like, how am I going to do all this by myself? She goes, you know what, we're going to help you. So I've got physical people telling me, we're going to help you. I've got physical people that have showed up and helped me. I've got the Lord saying, you can do all things through me. I'm going to give you what you need. Your Holy, I'm going to give my Holy Spirit to you when you need it. You will be able to do this, and you'll be able to walk through this victorious because I've got some stuff going on that I want you to be right in the big middle of. And, and, I, and I, I want to be in the middle of everything God has for me. It's like, how could you not give yourself totally to God? How could you not say, Lord, I'm all yours. Anything you want, I'm yours. And I don't want to do it any other way except your way. I only want to do it your way. And that verse, uh, when I read that the other day, it referenced me to John 15, 5, which he is the vine, and we are the branches, and you abide in the vine. And without him, we can do no thing. Separate that. No thing. Nothing. We can do no things without him. We have to be abiding in him. Apart from him, which in the Amplified again says a vital union. That vital union. If you cut, if you cut the uh, one of your, I mean, you're like pruning the roses, and you cut one by accident, it's like that limb's going to die. You, there's nothing you can do to save it. You cut that vital union. And once you cut that vital union, it can't survive. It, it looks okay for a few days, but it withers and it dies. And that's what happened. We have to have a vital union with Him. We have to have that bloodline literally going from Him to us, just like a baby has to have that umbilical cord. So they have to have that vital union to the mother, or that baby dies. Because that, that bloodline, that vital union is giving them everything that they need. And this vital union, when we abide in Him, He's giving us everything we need. Everything we need is coming. When we need it, all that nourishment. And, but you have to stay in His presence. You have to abide. You have to dwell. You have to take up your residency. You have to spend time with Him in word, in prayer, in praise, in worship. And that's what I did, and that's what I'm still doing. In uh, John 15, 7, when I read on to read to, uh, yesterday, uh, it says to abide, abide vitally united to Him. No thing is going to work properly without the Lord. You may be able to do stuff, but you can't do it properly. You may be able to do stuff, but you won't do it at the right time or the right way. As long as you've got that vital union, anything you put your hand to, you will be a success. Because when you walk in God's will, it can't help but be a success. When you do it your way, I want Him to bless it. He didn't have to bless anything that's not His. And when we try to do it without Him, He's pretty much telling us, you know what, it ain't going to be a success. How? He doesn't want us to be a success without Him. If you succeed without Him, we don't need Him. But when we have to realize every day, Lord, I need you. I need you. And that's why I've been so broken the last two weeks when realizing I need you. Without you, I can't do this. I can't do anything. Not just this or any. There, we can't do anything without him. We can't survive without him. And Philippians 4.19 says, My God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need, but only according to the riches of Jesus Christ. Whatever your need is, he's not going to give you just enough to squeak by. He's not going to give you enough to say, whew, well, I just barely made that. If he's called you to do something, he's going to give you more than enough. And that's that vision I had a few months ago when I saw my hands like this full of gold coins overflowing. I'm going to give you more than enough provision. And again, that word provision, not only enough to meet my needs, but to help other people too. Not only enough money, enough food, enough clothes, enough things, but enough grace. Enough understanding about brokenheartedness. Enough understanding about broken people. Enough understanding about what people need in their time of need. And I just, I still, I still believe that this church is going to be full of hurting people. They're not going to have a thing to offer us financially. But we're going to have all kinds of stuff to offer them. Because of what God is putting in us spiritually. We're going to have something to meet their need. And, and that's what God is calling us for. We're going to meet people's needs with provision. Whatever he's given us, that's what we're going to be able to provide to them. And what an exciting thing. If he's provided you happiness, you're going to be able to provide happiness. If he provides you with joy, and just like Joyce was saying, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, outside of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to have that. You're not going to have that. The first three, the first three services... Uh, which I, I can see why she, she always say people stay seated, but of course they don't. You got about a uh, quarter of them that's going to beat it out the door, and, and because she said it's going to be the, the salvation uh, message. And each night there were like 500 or more that got saved. But that last service, 
they came out. The pa I, guess, I know he wasn't the pastor because it wasn't. Uh, Tommy Barnett was there, but he's not the pastor there at all. She calls him her pastor. Luke Barnett is his son, and he's the pastor of that church. This is another guy that was there that came in every service. But he came, and before she even spoke that last service on Saturday morning, he explained the Holy Spirit. And he offered to get everybody filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Awesome! And I told my sister, I don't know if they always plan that before she speaks, but like, it's a good thing before everybody's shooting out the door for whatever. I said, this is what they need to do. Do it before everybody's shooting out the door, because everyone's going to stay to hear her. Let them stay in here. The best part. The best part of inviting Jesus into your heart. The best part of getting the Holy Spirit in your, your life. And so I, I, you know, I've been hearing different teachings on the Holy Spirit, too. That is a necessary part of this equation. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, we don't have, uh, we're, you know, we're going out to fight a battle with a knife when we need a machine gun. And yes, you get some, but you get oh so much more. Why would you only want a little bit of what God has to have? We're going to have a potluck. I don't want to go in there and get just a spoonful and say, well, you've got enough. Oh, but there's so much more to try. I want to try it all. I want, this is really good. I want a lot of it. No, you just get a spoonful. Just be happy with your little spoonful. Why would you be happy with a spoonful of potluck? Why would you be happy with just a drop of water when you can drink the whole glass when you're on a hot day? Why would we be happy with just a little bit of the Holy Spirit when we can have so much more? <clears throat> yes, yes, you get it when you get saved, but there's so much more God wants to do. And so I don't want to be happy with my life. I don't want to be happy with just enough. And that's another thing that the Lord has told me. Gary always did things abundantly. And that's what, what, what God says. I will supply your name, need abundantly. Ask abundantly. Don't be happy with just enough. And yet... Oh my, I've been happy, you know, this, I'm satisfied. I don't want to be satisfied. I want to be hungry. I want to be hungry for everything he's got. I want more. I want more. I want it all, God. I want to go deeper. I want to go higher. I want everything that you could possibly pour out on top of me and, and everybody in my community and my family. I want God to just pour it in and pour it in and pour it in until I can't even hold it anymore. I want it to overflow and get on everybody. And that's what God has for all of us. I know he's going to do so much for each one of us, through each one of us, because we've been faithful. And because you've been faithful, he will be faithful. And we don't have to look at age or money or size or anything else. God's not limited by any of it. He's not limited by anything. And so he can just give us everything that we need in the time that we need it. And what an exciting time. I think we're going to see, walk through some of the most exciting times in our life. And I wouldn't want to miss it for anything, for any reason. I don't want to go back to anything that, that was less than God's full, complete, what he has for each one of us. And so I just want to, I want God to keep breaking me. I want him to keep showing me those times where I'm just broken to think, I love you so much. I can't do without you. Because when we get to the point where we can do without him, then that's when he has to back off because he can't move. And he wants to be get all the glory. He wants to do all the work. He just wants a willing vessel. I want to be willing in anything. And that's why when I leave, I'm always, Lord, protect my stuff. I said, no, Lord, protect your stuff. Because this isn't my stuff anymore. It's all yours. It's all yours. You do with it whatever you want to do. It doesn't even have any hold on me. I, have, I don't need it. I don't want it. You use it for your glory. And so that's what God wants to be with everything he puts through our hands. It's his anyway. He brings everything through our hands. And so I just want to I just want to encourage you that God is our provider. Literally, provide anything that you need. If you need health, if you need healing, if you need money, if you need strength, if you need a word for the day, if you need wisdom, whatever we need, He will provide it when we need it. And according to what His Word says, and I'm not saying this, He's saying it. He says, My God will liberally supply, fill to the full, every need according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so I'm just, I'm just excited to see what God has for me, has for you, has for each one of us, because God's not done. God's not done with, with me. He's not done with you. He's not done with this church. God has a mighty, mighty plan, and we all get to be in the big middle of it.